Um, the issue with second-hand fuel tanks, you know, if they have had a little bit of water in them. I think this is a first-gen Mustang one. That's another cool job done. Um, on to the next one. All right, so the plan today is to mount up the fuel tank. Now, um, my original plan was, and I'm on uh, a couple of different Facebook groups um, around EHs and modified EHs and that, and there's so many different fuel tank variations going around and everything like that. I think the one that I really liked the best was uh, a guy named Scott, he uses, or he's put in his recent build a uh, fuel tank out of an XH Falcon, so out of a ute. Um, so they're about, I don't know, that big. And yeah, it just, it actually fits into that hole that I've got there just nicely. <clears throat> so I went to, went on Marketplace and went to find one. And yeah, the one that I, that I found, it was, yeah, pretty, pretty horrible on the inside and everything like that. And I was like, over and over in my head going, yeah, you're probably gonna run into this issue the entire time. Um, the issue with second-hand fuel tanks, you know, if they have had a little bit of water in them, a bit of rust, then yeah, they're, they're just destroyed in that. And so by the time you're paying two, three, four hundred dollars for a, a, um, you know, a second-hand tank, then you have to then put a new fuel pump in it, then you have to then go and, and you know, if it needs, in, in the inside of it needs to be restored and everything like that, they start adding up. So in the end, there was another, there's another guy, uh, Michael, I think his name is, he's doing a build and he's gone and bought an Aeromotive uh, fuel tank um, to suit, I think this is a first gen Mustang one. But in the end, it's a brand new tank. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, it's got the, the fuel filler at the top there, which we can go and run for. It's got the fuel pump and all the bits and goodies. And uh, that's that was $1,100. So in the end, I sort of just made the decision. Okay, it's a new tank. It's actually a bigger capacity. So it's a 22 gallon capacity, which is about 100 liters. Um, and yeah, I can then go and run. So there's a, there's a hole in the top. So it comes with a sender but the sender is not the same sender that I need for the dash, uh, for the instrument cluster. Um, now you can go and buy units to calibrate and, and do whatever, but I actually really like the idea of the Holly. Um, Holly's got a new one out. It's a laser sender, so it actually doesn't have a float or anything like that. It actually sends out a laser and then you can calibrate to whatever instrument cluster you've got. So I like the idea of that. Now, whether I go ahead with it or not, I don't know yet, but I like the idea of it. And now this is gonna give me the ability to do this. Anyway, so today's job is going to be putting that in here. Um, now, obviously we, I cut all this out <coughs> um, when I did the, the rear end. Um, so first job today is going to be, I've just got some, again, don't throw anything out. Well, I've got some off cut here, just some right angle. I think it's like a five mil right angle. So it's actually a fairly decent um, bit of right angle. I've got a couple of them. What I'm gonna do is before I remove, if you remember, I put in this just to brace the back. Um, <clears throat> before I remove that, I'm gonna cut a piece out here, tack that in, but that will also become, I guess the, the front mounting point for the fuel tank in that as well. Then once I have that done, I can then take this out, I can then cut the rest of that out, and then I'll be able to see where the back needs to line up in order to put another piece at the back here in order for that to drop in there. Now, clearance wise, it just fits. Um, I've basically got like 20 mil each side, if that. Um, so yeah, it's actually a good size fitting. I wanna try and drop it down as low as I can. Um, just to give me plenty of room and that for the filler neck and, and whatnot. So that's the plan. Let's, uh, let's crack into it.
So I've got an issue. Uh, we're working with tight margins here anyway, so you would have seen the time lapse. I can only move that bar so far forward because I need to be able to still drop the, the rear end out. So I've measured it and yeah, I've got smallest tolerance, which is fine. So that's in the right spot. But because of the size of that bar, that that uh, right angle's a five mil right angle and it's a 50 mil. When I've, when I've gone to put this in, uh, the lip on this between where the, where the tank finishes and the lip of that is 35 mil, which I didn't measure. So I'm going to have to go rip down to steel supplier and pick up some 35 mil angle. Only problem is it's Easter Sunday. So, so hopefully they're open. Um, so I'm going to have to, yeah. And the other, the other reason why I wanted to use that, you know, five mil plate is it just gives it an extra bit of bracing, especially in the back end here. Um, cause I'm obviously I'll, I'll put a bit more weight in the, in the rear end, like with the rear end, I'll put a bit more weight in the back. So to give that, you know, solid five mil bracing is sort of what I was looking for. But in the end, I'm just going to have to deal with some three mil plate or something like that which will then give me more tolerance to be able to push this in because this was going to be like right up against the edge as it was. So um, the other alternative is I could cut a piece out of this plate uh, and then wedge it in. But again, what's the point of doing that? Um, I might as well just finish it off nicely and get some three mil. So that's what I'll do is I'll go down and get some three mil, uh, some th yeah, 35 mil um, right angle and then uh, finish it off. So yeah, hang five. That was lucky. Um, they were open on Easter Sunday, so that's good. Um, all right, so I've chopped it all up and we're looking pretty good. Now that I've, I've, <laughs> I've had to write, jam it right up as close as I possibly can in here to the point where I'm actually gonna have to weld it to the, to the outside frame here, which is fine, whatever because uh, I'm going to put a sheet over this anyway. And I've managed to actually get it in the exact spot that I need to get it into as well to clear the, the frame. So yeah, pretty happy. I'm going to pull this out now. I'm actually going to drill and tap because I've still, I managed to still get five mil, um, five mil angle. Uh, it's just a 30 mil angle instead of, a, instead of the 50 that I had. So it's the right size in that. Uh, but because it's five mil, I'm actually gonna drill and tap um, so that instead of welding a nut on the backside or using nut certs, which is probably not gonna pass engineering, uh, I'm going to yeah drill and tap into this bar. So I'll do that on the bench before I weld these in. Uh, so I'm gonna do that now. And then I'll weld this back one in first. So I'll tack that in first. And then I'll tack that one in and then weld it off. And then what I'll do is on the sides here, I'll, um, I'm thinking about using a bit of five mil plate in the entire size of it. It's probably a bit of overkill, but I've only got a little bit to fill in anyway, and I still need to have some form of flat bar support or a piece of angle or something like that. So I might as well just finish that whole bit off and then I can weld that whole um, flat plate to the chassis rail and then it just tidies all that in and then it just fills all that in and I don't have to worry about it. And then all I have to do is just sheet that part there. So I managed to get, I got the um, fuel filler neck as well, just to sort of see. And then I'm gonna have to try and get, you know, a real tight radius 90 degree for that in order to keep it underneath the floor. Failing that, I might have to chop a bit of that off and then weld you know, a 90 degree on it. Um, to get that, but I'll play with that later. I'm not too concerned about that, even if for nothing else, even if I have a little, yeah, I'll sort that out later. Um, but yeah, next job, I'll take all this out again, drill and tap these, and then we'll take them in.
It's in. Good tolerances. Probably got about 10 mil that side. Yeah, 10 mil both sides. Probably I could push it that way a little bit more, but um, I can adjust that. So I put M6 bolts in here so I can adjust it and move it over where I need to, but that's pretty good where it is. And then you see that's my, um, that's the fuel pump. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the fuel lines I'll run the hard lines up through here and then I might go on the top side of that run along there drop into that that'll look nice there across the back's pretty nice as well and then yeah and the top yeah so what I did is um, as I said I uh, drilled and tapped uh, these ones and then I broke my tap so in the end I had to weld some nuts on the back bottom of these ones but that's okay um yeah what it should have um i've just got to check uh height wise but I'm, as i said i'm gonna have to do a, like a real tight 90 degree to go to the fuel filler over there um but i'll play with that another day uh and then the last thing i've got to do is obviously now i can use this um i can actually just make a square piece of sheet straight across and then that covers all that in um, just do some sides down the sides there but yeah it makes it easier just to go bang bang done I'll cut that off a little bit more and then um, weld that in there and yeah Bob's your uncle but yeah pretty happy with how that's come out that's another cool job done um, on to the next one